thanks for participating in the Invisible to Invincible Summit, where we're helping you to move from that place of invisibility to invincibility. And our next speaker of the day is Melody Donovan. I don't even remember how I met you, Melody. All I know is I just love you and you're so amazing, your personality and what you have to offer. Today, your topic is finding peace with financial independence. And I think that this is a really, really big piece of life because a lot of divorces happen because of finances, right? It's really prevalent. Like, you know, people um, make decisions like I'm not going to do something because I can't afford it, which is one of the common phrases that we hear, I think. And so we don't really have that financial independence. What does that mean? And then how can we you know, find that peace within about our finances. So excited to introduce our next speaker today is Melody Donovan. If you have any questions for her while she's speaking, go ahead and drop them in the chat. And if you're watching this replay, go ahead and drop the questions in the comments so she can reach out to you. Melody, you got the floor. Thanks, Linda. So great to be here. Um, we're experiencing a winter storm here. So, so far, just rain. Um, but I'm excited to be here to talk a little bit about my debt-free journey and um, how to find financial independence and find peace with that. Um, so um, I, I, was, uh, I grew up in a rural area and uh, was basically um, compared with all my life to other people in the area. And then basically was told that um, all I really needed to be was get married and have kids. I uh, didn't need to go to college, and um, that was me. Um, so, but fast forward a few, I did go to college and um, and met someone there and got married. Um, and then, then the you know the inevitable starts. You start comparing yourself with your neighbors and with the people that you go to church with and the people that you work with and. Um, and it just it just happens. Um, I don't know how many how many people know how that feels. To you're always like, you know, the whole saying, keeping up with the Joneses. Um, and so, through a lot of hard knocks and uh, some stubborn uh, um, ways, I I learned the hard way. I would say, <laughs> I learned the hard way and. Um, and I'm a stronger person for it, I guess. But I would love to share that journey and hopefully save some people um, the experience that I did. Um, there was a time where I could not buy Christmas presents for my children. I had suffered a job loss and um, almost lost our home at the time. Um, back in 1997 and it was the biggest kick in the pants I would say actually let me expand upon that the biggest kick in the pants was um, I had to borrow money from my dad who was terminally ill a thousand dollars so one um, I had to borrow money from my dad something I promised myself I would never ever do um, because he was the one that said I shouldn't go to college um, and so he just wasn't a good encourager. Um, and so then the fact that, you know, of all the other, maybe some of the other options that we could have had, that that was the route that I had to choose. Um, and so that was really the kick in the pants um, to get a letter from the mortgage company that if you don't pay, then you're going to lose your home. And then to have to, the only option I really had was um, to borrow money from my dying dad. Um so um, fast forward a little bit, I guess today, if you think about it, um, maybe you've heard some statistics, but these are some recent statistics. 78% of Americans today live paycheck to paycheck. Um, I did it, you know, just trying to juggle that money and like, well, maybe if I hold off on sending this, mailing this um, pay, this this bill here, um, then I can, I, I can, uh, float, float a few days back when floating on check, checking accounts was, um, the thing to do where you had like two or three, seven days even to, um, mail a check and not have it hit your bank. Those days are over, right? Cause it's almost immediate. Um, 
But then the other thing is those people, that 78% of the American population, if they had an emergency like the pandemic where they had their, where they lost their job, maybe, or they got cut back on hours or, you know, like the servers, the, um, who, you know, all the restaurants were closed down or, um, in New York, all the Broadway uh, actors who, you know, all of a sudden their shows were shut down to, um, to help find control of the pandemic. Those people and people like them, they didn't have a thousand dollars most likely in their accounts to cover an emergency. So, and then, but who, who lives on a thousand dollars a month? Um, so those are the things that just kind of got to me and I was, and I was one of them. And that was me 23 years ago. Um, and I'd like to say that I got my act together <laughs> right in that in 1997 when I lost my home, almost lost my home, but I didn't. Uh, and again, like Linda had said, there's um, the one of the number one, I think the number one reason that um, that people get divorced is because of finances. There's always Dave Ramsey, who's um, the owner of Financial Peace University, um, says that there are in, in every couple, there is a, a, a spender and a saver, a free spirit and a, a conservative person. So, um, and that's, you know, that's usually true. Someone always takes the rein to say, hold it, wait a minute. Let's not spend that money. And then there's somebody who is always the one that wants to do a budget. And there's always someone who wants to but to buck the budget. And that that's so when most times when people say um, you need to do a budget, what do people hear? I mean, I heard um, I got to I got to cut back and I I can't do things that I want to do because it's going to it's going to show me what. I have and what I don't have more importantly and um, that I can't afford to do the things that I've been doing and um, and so it's just budget is like you know the the four letter word that six letter word so um, so yeah uh, so that was us and and I would say we actually um, we actually tried to do a financial at the time I was married we actually tried to do a financial peace university um, but at the time um, we were just not our marriage was suffering and it ultimately ended in divorce because we couldn't talk to each other and that's huge um, so when it came time to do the budget everything just shut down and I'm just as guilty as he was about shutting down and not wanting to talk. Um, so, but then I did find Dave Ramsey, uh, the financial peace university. And, and I don't know if, um, you'd say, yes, I know Dave Ramsey or final financial peace university. If you want to put that in the chat. Um, but, uh, financial peace university and Dave Ramsey, Dave Ramsey was a multimillionaire real estate, agent um and in tennessee and he was a millionaire by the time he was 26 and that was in 2008 and i don't know if anybody remembers but 2008 is when that real estate bubble burst and um dave will tell you that he had multi multi-million dollars of um loans with the banks and the and the bank called his loans and all of a sudden he couldn't pay. And so he was bankrupt. And so that's when he decided um, to never again be in debt. And he worked his way out and he settled all of his debts. And, um, and he started this program and started talking and got on radios and then TV shows. And now he has his own network. And basically is what he's trying to do is change the American, the, the, the thinking, um, of people as far as um, change that from what, so what you hear, like get this credit card, let's do this. And you know, you need this. All you have to do is sign up for this um, rewards card. 
and um, you'll get cash back. And one thing that Dave says I always love is that no millionaire um, would say that they became a millionaire by um, getting um, rebates on their sky miles. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, he lost all his money and he started doing this. And so he created uh, the baby steps, um, which is something that I now um, try to live by. And I'm not always success successful, but I keep trying. Um, and so he suggests, um, he suggests these baby steps and um, I'll say them a little slowly and then I can share my email uh, later if you want to get more information on them and, um, and connect with me later. So number one is build your $1,000 emergency fund um, so that you just, just start somewhere. Um, and start with that so that you have a cushion if something happens. Um, number two is pay off all your debt except your mortgage. Uh, this includes student loans. And um, I would have to say I've modified that a little bit just because I'm an overachiever on my student loan debt. And this I get my student loan debt before I met uh, the Dave Ramsey program. Um, so just a little side note here, student loan debt in the United States is over $1.5 trillion now. And it says there are 45 million borrowers who owe 1.6 trillion in student loan debt is the second highest consumer debt category only behind mortgages. And it's even higher than credit cards and auto loans. Um, and that comes from a, a Forbes article from 2020. And so that number, of course, you know, here we are in 2022 and that number is even more astronomical. Um, yeah, I know. Don't get me started on student loans yet. It's not here, Linda. Um, but that was, that was something that I would, I would like to preach now is like, if, if there is a way to send your children to school, if you have children, send them to school without student loan debts, and maybe that's community college, just do it. I mean, because all in all, when it's all said and done, it doesn't matter where your, your um, degree comes from, just that you have it. And even now, trades are, trades are making such a popular comeback that you might, they might not even need a four-year degree. So just something to a whole different story. But anyway, so the number three on the Baby Steps program is fully fund your emergency fund with three to six months of expenses. And people say, oh my gosh, that's a lot of money to put away. And we're not talking like CDs and we're not talking investments. We're not talking, that's just putting it in a savings account that makes it liquid um, and easy. So you're not going to make a lot of money on it. But you also have to think if, you pay off all your debt, then, you know, your, your monthly expenses are going to be less. So, um, number four is invest 15% in retirement. So take care of yourself first because number five is save for college for your children. So, but it's always take, take care of yourself first, set money aside for retirement first before you start saving money for college. Um, because it, when it comes right down to it, they can apply for um, grants and scholarships and, um, and change, change their plans on where they're going to go to college. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. And, and that's the whole thing. People are saying, yeah, uh, Linda, I like that. Put your mask on first before you take care of somebody else. So yeah, you take care of yourself first. And, you know, and some people have said, well, should I take money on my 401k to um, pay for my child's college tuition? And usually Dave's answer is no, absolutely not. So um, you don't do that. You're taking away from your retirement and, you know, being able to take care of yourself and live um, financially free yourself later. So, um, so number five was save for college. Number six is pay off your house. And so, this is the step that I'm at right now. And uh, to do that, since I don't have any other uh, debt, uh, 
that except for my student loans, which, you know, is like my student loan debt is 118,000. I know it's a lot. And that's why I say, don't do it. I wish I had listened and, you know, and those earlier lessons of Financial Peace University and had um, been stronger to make a wiser decision and not do student loan debt. So I would just say there's plenty of, um, Dave Ramsey even has some books out there by some of his other personality, um, financial peace personalities that talk about going to college for free um, and or debt free. So um, there's a lot of options. You just probably just need to take a little extra time to prepare uh, in advance instead of waiting until it comes. Um, so pay off your house. And that's just like any, and part of Dave's uh, program is the um, debt snowball. So every time you have, um, you pay off a debt, you take that money and put it toward the next debt and the next debt. And you start, start with the smallest, the smallest balance and work to the highest balance. And then by the time you're done, you have all that extra money that you're paying on those other smaller debts to play to pay as extra principles on your house so you just want to make sure with your loan company that they allow um, extra principal payments and so then you can you can save so much i mean tens of thousands of dollars off of your loan when you can when you can pay off your house faster um and then the last one is build wealth and give and, um, and that's just because you have this extra income now. And most of the time, Dave will tell you, most of the time, the people that are going through this um, debt snowball and the baby steps, they find that they, um, their income increases. Um, they get better jobs, their, in, their, um, their confidence comes, uh, gets stronger. And so they, they are promoted and they get raises and so then they have that extra money too um and so the his favorite saying dave ramsey's favorite saying is live like no one else so you can live and give like no one else and um so i'm really trying to embrace this theory and um you know it's really hard to you know everybody's out there saying you know credit cards you know you can get a year of no annual fees and you know no no um no interest rates um and things like that it's just so enticing and um and so i wanted to go back to the joneses i don't know if everybody has ever heard have, everyone has heard of the saying um keeping up with the joneses um and it's so funny because they actually said I mean, the joneses actually existed um, they were a prominent New York family and um, with substantial interest in the chemical bank. And uh, as a result of marrying the daughters of the bank founder, John Mason. And so, but it, the funny saying is that um, keeping up with, don't, don't try and keep up the Joneses. That um, you may be trying to trying to keep up with someone else who's driving a Lexus or a Mercedes or a BMW, those guys. But a lot of times their appearances, people's appearances are not what the reality is behind the scenes. So they're leasing that car or they, you know, they, they are struggling every month to make ends meet. And so I just. Are you guys able to hear Melody? can't hear okay melody i'm not sure if you can hear me but I just totally lost you maybe that snowstorm is taking over i don't know uh, but oh my gosh it was amazing i loved everything she was sharing about finances and hopefully she'll be able to come back on the screen here uh, we have five minutes left till our next speaker so i'd love to know if anybody has any thoughts or uh, questions uh, i'm not sure if melody will oh you are here okay oh, did you lose me we lost you. It's <laughs> like you're in the, the matrix. We can see you, yeah, but we can't hear you. Um, say something see you. Good. Go ahead. Weird. Hello, can you hear me? I now saw I my... can, yeah. Hi, can yes. you hear me? Yes, yes. No? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, good. I'm so glad. So I was pretty much done. 
So, um, just you. Yeah. Can you hear me yet? Okay. I just say, uh, reach me. Reach me at Melody Inc. Um, at gmail.com. Awesome. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing that. And you're, it sounds like you're on this journey, you know, of that, you know, the financial journey is one that we get to choose, right? In, in my book, The Year of Fears, the number one lesson that I put in The Year of Fears is about budgeting. I was terrified to budget because that meant I was going to be constricted. And you mentioned at the beginning about uh, your uh, relationships have typically they'll have a spender and a saver, right? My husband is the saver big time and I am the spender big time. And so coming together sometimes is challenging. And we, you know, to me, budget means constraint. It means locking me down. Right. It means preventing me from being able to do what I want to do. And so what I'm hearing though is budgeting is actually, um, it's a way of, of creating freedom freedom for us because now we know what we're doing with our money and we I, it's fun now because now now I do budget you know that was seven years ago when I did it but now that I started budgeting I find that I like I feel good when I hit a goal because I set that financial goal for myself it's fun and it's especially fun when you hit a financial goal ahead of time you know like just because that's the goal doesn't mean you can't surpass the goal and so um, I'd love to hear from you. We have just a couple minutes left if you want to. Oh, first of all, you shared people can reach you at melodyinc at gmail.com. She put her her um, her email address in the chat there. And do you have a website? I know you were kind of working on one. Do you have a website? Um, I'm sorry to say, but it's not quite live yet. So Okay, not yet, but keep checking. Keep checking keep back. Checking. It'll be live. Yes. <laughs> It'll be live at some point. So awesome. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your tips and tricks about, you know, finances. And, and I'm sure that there might've been someone out there listening that was like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I want to do that. Reach out to Melody and see how she can help you, you know, with whatever it is that you're going through right now. Any last parting words, Melody? Parting. <laughs> what are your parting words? <laughs> I would just say, I know it's a struggle. I struggle with it every day, even though, you know, I've been on this journey for a little bit. And so it just, it's really, uh, I think what everybody else has said, just keep trying. And when you, when you fall short, then just get up and, and try again. So don't stop trying. Don't stop believing. That's right. You just got to keep be don't stop trying. You got to just keep going for it, right? And just keep doing what you <laughs> want to do. <laughs> awesome, Melody. Thank you so much for being part of the yeah. Invisible to Invincible Summit. Awesome.